Now next I'd like to demonstrate another example of Faraday's law. Uh, this uh, transformer circuit that we looked at uh, earlier, I'm going to use the primary coil on this to demonstrate another effect. I'm going to take this bundle of iron rods here and uh, bring it up uh, to a higher position here and then lock it in with this set screw so that it'll bring the, uh, it'll extend the magnetic field up into this region here and then we can work with that a little bit up there and see what happens when I take this ring as if it were a secondary coil of a transformer and uh, place it in this position and let that ring see a changing magnetic field and therefore have an electric field produced in it that will drive a current through the ring. Now let's see what happens when I push this switch. Now that you know what to watch for, we'll try that one more time. So you can see that there was a force on the ring that flipped it up in the air. And where did that force come from? Well, back to the idea of magnetism. If we have a current uh, moving charge in a magnetic field, there will be a magnetic force. And there is a magnetic field here, albeit a changing magnetic field. And that magnetic field then exerts a force on the current that's induced in this secondary coil of this uh, transformer, if that's what we want to call it. So when we induce a current in the, in the secondary coil in this ring, when there's a current that flows in that ring, that current in a magnetic field will experience a magnetic force, and it turns out that the direction of the force is such as to flip it up into the air. I'll try that one more time. Notice that if we have a ring that has a split in it, even though we induce an electric field, it's not a completed circuit, and so there'll be an electric field there, and the current will try to flow, but because of the split in the ring, it can't go anywhere. Another example of Faraday's law.